Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, I'm Debbie Weiss, and I'm here to talk to you today about the cesspool that is middle-age dating. I want to talk to you about the first date that I had in 32 years. It was after my husband had passed, about 14 months, and I was going on my first date since I'd been married. I was so excited. I meet this guy on J-Date. He's super funny online. Um, he has all these jokes, like what if uh, jazz songs had been written by Jews? They would all be about fiscal prudence. Um, and he looked like Alec Baldwin with a lot of gym time, real fit. I meet him a few times for lunch. It's great. And then it's our first dinner. We're sitting at dinner. I think this is it. We have red wine. It's very romantic. And then he says, I need to tell you something. Oh, he says, I need to tell you that I've been really unhappy for many, for many of the past years. And I think, okay, maybe I can make him happy. Maybe I can help. But then he says, I need to tell you about the woman who ruined my life. And for the rest of dinner, I was treated to this thrilling monologue about this gorgeous blonde he'd met at the gym. Apparently, she was um, really hot, and she had amazing breast implants, which is really what I always want to hear on a dinner date with a guy. Want to hear about another woman's chest. But she ruined his life. Apparently, she was mean to his kids. She made him buy a house he couldn't afford. And then eventually, she cheated on him with another guy from the gym. And I'm, okay. We get back to my place. I think, well, for now, I'm on my couch, fireplace, red wine. And I hear about several other women who also ruined his life. There was another one, and then there was a pretty brunette, and going back to his wife. And it was really, honestly, pretty awful. But I was crazy, so I agreed to a second date because he'd seemed so amazing on paper. I did not agree to a third date. But I did learn four lessons from this. And I think they were kind of important. First of all, dating and regurgitation do not mix. Or in other words, your date is not your therapist. You know, when you, make, when you decide to date, you're making a conscious choice to put your best foot forward. And that has to be with being with the person you're with. Being so in the past was, is painful. Um, you know, I was reminded on my date with this fellow, let's call him Mark, that was his name, that, um, you know, how terrible all this was. And I felt like I was in that movie Airplane where Robert Hayes is talking to every single passenger on the plane about his ex-relationship, and then they're all trying to get out of there, but they're stuck on an airplane. So I kind of felt like one of the airplane listeners. So when you're dating, you need to try harder and you need to be making a decision to be pleasant and not to be using your date as your therapist. We can't fix you. Second, people need to accept agency for their choice of partners. This man went through not one poor choice, but I believe four. Now I'm a widow. So as I was listening to this, I thought, well, okay, you know, my husband died. You simply made really bad choices four or five times. I think we need to have some agency here. I mean, why was this guy making so many bad choices? That was the one thing he left out of his conversation was, why was he in this situation? The third lesson I learned, okay, not popular here, but a lot of middle-aged men lack empathy. I mean, think about it. If you were on a date with somebody, is this what you would want to hear about two gorgeous exes, both with, again, impressive breast augmentation, which is fine, but maybe not something you want to share with all your dates, then the love of your life who got away, then going back to the marriage that didn't work. Think about it. Um, you know, what would you, what would you want someone to listen to? What would you want to project? What surprised me was how absolutely selfish and solipsistic this guy was. Couldn't he share anything with me that wasn't his past agony? And finally, the final lesson I learned, well, I could put it two ways. One, the universe has a twisted sense of humor. I mean, here I was, I'd been married for 32 years to the love of my life. I'm going on a date 14 months after my husband's pass. I'm ready to look to my future. You know, I put on those cute little miserable boots with the high heels that I would never wear if I wasn't going on a date. 
And then I get this guy who's basically using me as an agony ant. But there's another way to look at this too. And the lesson that I learned, I would say it's gratitude. I mean, this guy had been miserable for most of his adult life, apparently, or so he was telling me. I'd had 32 years with someone I loved, and I had those memories, and I had no regrets about them. And listening to this miserable individual, at least I felt so grateful for the time that I did have and the life I had before me. I just never planned on seeing Mark again. I think that's it. This is Debbie Weiss uh, sharing with you stories of the cesspool that is middle-aged dating. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.